Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and welcome to this Wednesday. I pray as you know, most people call today hump day. It's kind of the middle point of the week to where you've made it through Monday, made it through Tuesday, and if you can just make it through today. Well, today we're just going to declare that this is the day the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. I pray that wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, that you're finding God's grace, his strength, his peace, his love, his mercy, and all of his benefits toward you being actual, actually realized in your life. You know, sometimes when we live our lives, we walk things out, and this may seem a little strange, but we walk things out by faith. We walk them out um, kind of, we believe God is true. God's word is faithful. His word is true. Uh, but we also experience moments where we sense his, his presence. We sense his strength, his grace, his mercy, his love in a tangible way. Well, whether you're walking out of promise by faith or whether you sense the presence of God's, uh, 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 Holy Spirit with you, uh, within you, walking with you. Don't ever think for a moment that whether you're walking out something by faith or whether you sense him, that he's any more or less real. There, I finally said it. <laughs> we're going to get right into this today and we're going to go right back to what we talked about on Monday's program, and that is living in Christ. We want to talk about the second part of this, and I'm just going to review real quickly. Paul said in his message at Mars Hill in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, he said, for in him, now who is the him? In Christ. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. As also some of your poets have said, for we also are his offspring. Now, what we want to talk about today is the benefit of being in Christ. You know, so often people think and they feel that, you know, we, we kind of feel like we, we have forgiveness of sins. Uh, we have... Uh, a ticket punch to heaven, but there are so many other benefits. You know, David said, I will not forget all of his benefits toward me. How many people take a job, maybe they're making less than they had wanted to, but the benefits exceeded what they had even wanted. Maybe it's insurance, a, uh, uh, you know, a retirement package, whatever. When we think about the benefits that we have in Christ because of the relationship that we've been afforded, that the Holy Spirit was given after Christ's ascension to let us clearly see and understand all of those benefits. And I don't know about you, but it seems like those benefits, we don't, we don't learn all of those benefits in one shot. We don't learn all of those benefits in, in one season. I believe, as I say often, there is a learning curve that we will continue to learn of the benefits that we have received in Christ for the rest of our lives until we see him face to face, whether it's joy, peace, mercy, grace, forgiveness, whether it's change in our life, our character, in our thinking, on and on and on, we learn the benefits of what it means to be in Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, very familiar passage of scripture, there is now therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has made me free and made you free from the law of sin and death. Now, condemnation, we had touched on this, and this is where we ended on Monday's program. Condemnation means an adverse sentence, meaning a sentence you do not want, 
an adverse sentence, finding one guilty to suffer the full penalty of a crime or a transgression. Think of this, because of what Christ has paid for in full. And I love his last words on the cross. It is finished. What is finished? Every righteous requirement made necessary and deemed necessary by a holy God in order for people, for you and I to have a relationship with him, every righteous requirement was met and paid in full. So, when we received Christ, we received and we are now the benefactors of what he paid for. Righteousness, holiness, sanctification, forgiveness of our sins, the list goes on. In him, while we may look at our lives and say, I'm guilty, God says, because you are in my son, I find you blameless, faultless, and innocent. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about that, it brings a gratitude, a gratefulness, an appreciation, a sense of worship, of honor to him for all that he did. Why? Because of his love for you. Think of that. Why would God, who would look at man and say, man is guilty, man is sinful, what would prompt and lead a holy God to give such a costly gift? Well, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. It was God's love. The pureness, the simpleness, the profoundness of God's love for you. That is why he sent his son, so that we would be found in him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31, But of him... You are in Christ, in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Being found in him, being found in him means you're forgiven. Being found in him means you're righteous. Being found in him means you're holy. Just as holy as God considers Jesus to be, he considers you now in Christ, living in Christ, to be found just that blameless and faultless before a holy God. And when we think about that, when you think about that, Because nobody knows our lives better than we know our own lives. We know that it took all of God's grace, all of God's forgiveness, all of God's mercy to allow us to at least be found in a relationship with him that we can grow, progress, mature, and develop as believers. And as I said earlier, for the rest of your life, you're going to continue to grow, learn, develop, mature, walk out the promises of God's word, all the while being in Christ and living in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, such a powerful and profound scripture. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Think of that for a moment. Being found in Christ, being found in a relationship with God through what Christ has done, now you are a brand new creation. You are a brand new creature, a brand new species of being. And if you don't have anything else to be thankful for, grateful for, worshipful to God, thankful to him for having mercy and grace and forgiveness toward you, it should be that now 
Your life is not a better version of who you used to be. Your life is a totally different pass from death now to life walking in a relationship with God to continue for eternity living out that relationship with God all because of what Christ has done. Well, we could say so much more about this, but I want to encourage you today. Think on the benefits, the blessings, and all that God has done in your life already up to this point just because of Jesus, all because of what Christ has done for you because he was God's gift to express God's love for you. Hey, if this program has been a blessing to you or any of the other material on our social media platforms, not only on Facebook, but also if you have not gone to our YouTube channel, please go to Faith is the Victory Fellowship at YouTube and subscribe. There you'll find all different types of materials that will be a blessing to you. Hey, before I go, I also want to ask you if these programs have been a blessing, please go into the description section immediately after the program, and there you will find several different simple ways in order for you to be able to sow a generous gift into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Hey, God has placed us here, allowed us to be on this platform, but we are sustained by your generosity. Whether you give or not, I want to thank you in advance for your faithfulness and for watching the program. And until tomorrow, please always remember, I love you, God loves you, and as always, my friend, never forget, He is faithful.